Are you guys ready for a session of run bad, play bad, get tilted, and punt off? Because that's exactly what this is. Check it out. What's up guys? Thanks for coming back, watching vlog number five. If you're a first time viewer, if you do like the content, please smash that like button, hit subscribe. It helps out the channel immensely and it allows me to keep doing what I'm doing. So please do that, hit that thumbs up. Hit that notification bell as well so you get the latest and greatest hot off the press. This, uh, this session that we're gonna get into, it is not one of my greatest moments. Um, you know, we get tilted, we run bad, we play bad, uh, pff, all of the above. It's just a really bad session, but, uh, obviously we have these ups and downs in poker. It's all about being able to control your emotions, being able to, uh, control what you basically can control. And that's your play. You can't control what cards you receive or how the flop's going to turn out, but you can control when you put your money in. Um, a lot of the times we go into a session clear mind and, you know, you just assume that you're going to play well. Well, that doesn't always happen, especially when outside factors come in and then it affects your play. So don't want to get into it uh, too much, um, but we are at Lucky Chances once again and uh, just want to show you that uh, we don't always run like Usain Bolt. Sometimes we're stuck like a duck, and this time we are ducking it. So, without further ado, check it out. This video was created for entertainment purposes only. By no means am I a professional poker player. The following video is not intended to teach nor train, but rather to provide a look into my journey. Please gamble at your own risk. So, we start off the session with smoke in middle position. There is one limper, and we raise to 20. The cutoff calls and the limper calls. So we're going three ways to the flop, which is Jack Jack 10 with two hearts. It gets checked to us, and we could bet here since we can have a lot of ace jack, king jack, and queen jack combos in our range. Um, it is the start of a session, so let's just play straight up and check here. That's exactly what we do. It gets checked through. The turn brings the jack of spades. Now that there are three jacks on board, Unless somebody has a pocket pair, we can confidently think that we have the best hand here. It gets checked through again to us, so we place a bet of 25. If they don't have at least ace high beat, they're probably going to fold. Well, the cutoff calls and the limper folds. So now we go heads up to a river. We are probably going to need some help here. Um, the river is the two of clubs. No help. We check and he checks behind. He quickly shows pocket eights for the winner. So we go a long time without seeing a playable hand and this leads us to look down at ace four off like it's two aces. We're bored, we're card dead, and we've been donating our blinds. So now it's time to take action. We raise from the cutoff to 20. Small blind and big blind call. So we're going three ways to the flop of Jack five, five with two spades. It gets checked to us and you know, we're just going to continue the story. We're going to rep the fake aces. So we bet 25 only the big blind calls. Now the turn brings the deuce of clubs. The big blind now quickly fires out a bet of 35. This is a weird lead, but he probably has a decent piece of the board, especially with that type of play. We don't have anything except for the gutty that we picked up, but it's such a good price to hit the straight or an ace on the river. So we make the call. The river brings the deuce of spades. He bets 45 and we just let it go. Okay, now we're in the cutoff with king three of clubs. Once again, this is looking like a premium when you're just so bored and card dead. It's a straddled pot with one limper and we raise to 40. The big blind and limper both call. So we're going three ways to the flop of Jack, seven, eight with two clubs. 
We picked up a king high flush draw. This is great. Finally a high equity hand. Checks to us and we bet 30. Only the straddler calls. So now we're going heads up to the turn of the nine of hearts. This now brings the one liner to the straight. He checks to us and now we probably have to check back. This board is speaking to his range all day long. So that's what we do. We check back. The river brings an interesting card. We don't hit the flush, but the ten of diamonds rolls off, making a straight on board. He now leads into us for 65. Does he have a queen here? What combos make sense? I mean, maybe only queen jack, queen ten combos. This is a spot where we need to raise because if we call, we're probably chopping. Actually, let's run the math real quick. There's about 180 in the pot. We have to call 65 to win half of that, so that would be 90. From first glance, before calculation, it seems like a slam dunk call. Not very many people will fold here, but if you think about having to call 65 to win 90, you have to be right about the chop about two-thirds of the time. In some instances, you be right more than that, but against certain opponents who will only value bet this spot, it might be negative EV to call off. This is why I like the raise a little more. If you're going to call off anyways for a chop, why not give yourself a chance to scoop the pot? If he doesn't have a queen, it's going to be hard for him to call. If he has a queen, then we lose anyways. But we already narrowed his range to queen jack, queen 10, or no queen, heavily weighted toward no queen. With all that said, you know exactly what we did. We called. <laughs> We've been bored, running bad, and now playing bad. He shows ace four of clubs. So it's good because we chopped a pot, but wow, we were in bad shape. Good thing the club didn't come. We're in the cutoff with eight six of diamonds. There's one limper in middle position, and we raise to 25. He is the only caller. So we're going heads up to a flop of ace seven three. He checks and... This is such a dry flop that we have to bet our whole range here. So we bet 30. He makes the call. And the turn brings a jack. He checks and, well, we just check back because we can't really beat anything. And there really were no draws besides maybe a wheel draw on the flop. So let's see another card. The river is a nine of diamonds. He bets out and... I mean, we just can't call. If he checks the river, we could place a bet because he's pretty much capped at a 7. Sometimes he can show up with a weak ace here, but this probably wasn't the case. So, we just fold. So we look down at Jack-10 off. And my friends and I like to call this hand Timberlake. I'll let you guys figure out why we call it Timberlake. Drop it in the comments if you think you know why. So we are under the gun plus one and we raise to 15. Middle position calls and the big blind now moves in for 39 total. We can make the four bet isolate move, but you know, it just seems a little spewy, especially um, out of position just in case middle position does have a big hand and he wants to flat the four bet so we just call and middle position calls as well the flop is very good for our hand it is 10 10 4 we bet small to induce a call to reel him in it's a dry side pot we bet 25 he raises to 70 leaving himself with about 200 behind we make the call. Turn is a blank. It's the seven of hearts. We check and he checks back. The river is now the ace of spades. We need to get value, but does he have a 10? Probably not since he checked back the turn. Does he have an ace? Maybe. We can just ship here, but it'll show a little bit too much strength. Hoping that he hit an ace, we can probably get about maybe 105, which is about half of his stack. And that's exactly what we do. He thinks for a bit and puts in the call. We show and we're good. 
We finally win a decent hand. Long time no eat. What's up? We got a little mid-session update. Not doing so well. Getting our butt kicked, actually. We're pretty card dead. Not really picking up very many hands. And when we do pick up hands, we raise pre-flop. We're either getting three bet or we just completely whiff. It's kind of one of those sessions. But uh, you have to embrace this part of the game and uh, fight through it. Just uh, play solid. Right now, I'm just taking a little break, taking a little breather getting something to eat, getting something to drink, reset my mind. Still need to play solid, so uh, let's do it. Want to know something ironic? Well, right after this mid-session update, we went through a bunch of hands that ultimately led to our demise because we didn't listen to ourselves. Moral of the story, practice what you preach, don't just teach. First hand, after the break, we get 3-4 spades in the big blind. Under the gun, raises to 20. Middle position calls, small blind calls, and we call. The flop comes out. King, queen, 10. Whiff. Checks to the under the gun, and he bets 25. We fold. Jack, 8 off in the big blind. Under the gun, limps. Middle position limps. Flop is queen, 9, 3. Checks to the limper. He bets 20. Only we call. Turn is the nine of hearts. Whiff. We check and he bets 35. We fold. This is when you know you're getting fed up. You start raising under the gun plus one with six four of spades. Cut off calls. And of course, the small blind three bets to 100. We just fold. Now we look down at pocket sevens in the cutoff. We open raise to 20. Only the big blind calls. Flop is ace, jack, three, two hearts, whiff. He checks and we bet 20. He calls. Turn is the four of spades. It goes check, check. River is the four of hearts. He fires out 80 and we fold. Okay, pocket sevens again in the cutoff. Middle position raises to 20, hijack calls, we call, and the small blind calls. So we're going four ways to the flop of king, queen, nine, whiff. It gets checked through. The turn is the nine of hearts. The PFR bets 65, and we fold. You guys are in luck today. We have another new hand. This is called the intro. And the reason we call it the intro is because these two cards are in the intro of my video. So we look down at King Nine of Clubs under the gun. We race to 20. Cutoffs calls, small blind calls, and the big blind calls. So we're going four ways to the flop, which is Ace, 10, 6, Whiff. Checks through on the flop. Turn is the eight of spades. Big blind bets 15. We just fold. We pick up Ace Jack off on the button in a straddled pot, cut off limps, and we race to 35. Small blind, big blind, and limper call. Flop is King, Queen, 4. This is kind of a whiff. We do have one over and a gut shot. We normally bet in this spot, but since the session has been going like crap, we just choose to check back because in our head, we've been trained to think that we'll never get there this session. So that's what we do. We check back. We get confirmation when the turn brings the seven of hearts. Small blind leads for 95. And once again, we let it go. All right. Yep. Here we go. We have the intro once again, this time of the heart variety. We are under the gun and raise it to 15. Middle position and small blind call. Flop is queen, eight, six, whiff. Checks to the cutoff, who bets 20, and we put in the fold. So we're winding the session down to the last couple of hands. In this hand, we pick up 9-8 of clubs under the gun, and we raise to 15. Cutoff calls, and the button re-raises to 45. It folds to us, and we make the call. The cutoff now back rips it for 165 total. Button thinks about it for a little bit and makes the call. Now we're getting a good price for our call. It's 
like 120 more, but we're going to be playing OOP. So this is not really a position we want to be in, but we eventually make the call. The flop is queen nine four with two hearts, floppy middle pair. We're playing for a dry side pot now. We check and the button bets 135. Once again, we're getting a decent price to peel one card. Hopefully it could be a card that benefits us on the turn. So we call the turn is the seven of spades. Not a good card for us. We check again and he bets enough to put us all in approximately $350. We obviously can't call here. We're frustrated with the whole session. We almost want to call it off just to get this over with, hoping that he has a bluff like ace king. Eventually we just fold. The river is the three of hearts, completing the front door flush. The button rakes in the side pot and shows his hand, which is two black aces. The cutoff just folds his hand and we feel stupid for being in that pot. This is exactly how you get punished for calling light preflop. Okay, so last hand of the night. We have ace five of hearts on the button. Middle position raises to 15. MP plus one calls. We call and the small blind calls. So we're going four ways to the flop, which is ace five six. This is a great flop for our hand. It's been a very long time since we've seen something like this. We are ecstatic. We just flop top and bottom. Now it checks to us and we bet 35. Only the PFR calls. Turn is the queen of hearts. Now we pick up the nut BDFD. He checks and we bet 85, leaving ourselves with about 350 behind. He just calls. The river is the king of clubs. Now he jams into us. <laughs> we think about it for a bit and every bone in our body is telling us to fold. I mean, we really only beat one hand here and that's king queen. Sure, we block pocket aces. We block pocket fives. He could have pocket sixes. I guess the other two pair hand that we beat is like six five. But that's really a stretch. Why was he not check raising or even betting or showing any aggressive action on the flop or the turn? This just doesn't feel right or seem right. Did he slow play ace queen on the turn and not check raise? Did he really just check call two streets with ace king? Man, there's so many things going through my mind. But at this point, you know, it just doesn't seem like there's any combos that we're ahead of unless it's a pure bluff. Well, you know how this session has been going. So with all that said, we're running bad. We're a little tilted. We haven't picked up very many hands. And that ultimately leads us to call. He shows over pocket sixes for the flopped set. Wow. And we end the session with that. Go home ducking it. Well, guys, I hope you liked that video. Obviously, we didn't win, but, you know, even through losing and trying times, it's always good to reflect back on your session and, you know, just think about why you lost. Uh, what were the reasons? Was it out of your control or was it in your control? If it was in your control, then this is definitely a learning moment. And it's always good to go through those because you'll be bigger, better, faster, stronger next time. So, you know, next time you hit the felt, you're going to think back on all those plays that you could have or should have made. And you're gonna implement that into uh, your next session or your next game, whatever it may be, either way, that's how you get better. So hopefully next time we hit the felt, we're gonna get better, we're gonna learn from our mistakes, and uh, we are going to run like Usain Bolt. Um, if you haven't already, please, please, please remember to like and subscribe. It helps out the channel greatly, and uh, I would definitely appreciate that. So until next time, always remember, don't be stuck like a duck like me this time. Run like Usain Bolt. Peace.